Well, y'all ready to get started? Coach, you want to just start us off and then we'll take questions? Sure. You know, nine practices in, uh, had our first scrimmage <clears throat> on Friday night. It was good to get out there and see guys finish plays. Um, you know, I think just looking at the nine practices we've had, there's there's been a lot of good reps for young players. It's been fun to see the, the incoming guys, transfers and newcomers progress. Uh, and then other guys pick up where they left off. And, and um, you know, I think C.J. Riley, it's been fun seeing him get back to form. Uh, last year, he obviously played, but I didn't think he played the way he was capable. I think in ACL, uh, even though physically might be there a year later, it's mentally sometimes longer before a guy can overcome that injury. And he's really playing good football. So it's been fun to see C.J. Um, get back to to being not just a big guy that can catch, but a big guy that can run and catch. And I, you know, overall the quarterback position, I know that's where everyone wants to to go. Um, Devin's playing very confident. Didn't think he had a great day Saturday, um, but he's had a really good spring. You know, Ben Finley's way ahead of where he was a year ago at this time. Aaron uh, is starting to, you know. Um, do some things where he's not thinking as much. I think it's a lot, you know, learning an offense against um, any college defense, but particularly one that has so many players back in it like ours. Our defense is playing really fast. So it's been fun to watch. You know, the transfer guys that are in here, I think Derek Pitts uh, and Cyrus Fagan have both been great additions to our back end. They're competing. I'm not going to say they're starting right now because they're not, but they're competing every day and making us better. And there's great competition. There's competitive depth at the corner and nickel and safety position. Uh, I thought our running backs with Bam and Ricky being out for the spring, it's been fun to see uh, those guys rep and, and Demarcus Jones and Delbert Mims really ran hard and physical in the scrimmage. Trent Penix uh, has done a lot of things in our offense. We're trying to teach him some different spots and be able to use him with his versatility. He had a nice third uh, short yardage catch that went for a touchdown. Um, you know, on the D line, I think, you know, obviously we lost a lean, but just seeing the progress there with CJ Clark and, and Davin Van. Uh, Daniel Joseph's back. Savion's probably the most improved uh, out of the group. He's playing really well, and he's almost 300 pounds doing some of the things he's doing. It, it's fun to watch him take that next step as a player. So, you know, in all, we're, we're you know, uh, excited about just being out there for one, but, you know, the fun the guys are having, the intensity, the way we're practicing, you know, there's a lot of things between now and the end of spring, I like to see us improve on, particularly with the younger guys. You know, there's <clears throat> there's still too many penalties, and most of them are happening in the freshman and sophomore class. Um, and I think that's a lot of that is fatigue and focus issues with younger players. But uh, it's been fun being a part of it. So, open it up for any questions. All right, Jonas, you want to start us off? Yep. Good morning, Coach Dorian. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Um, you, you mentioned CJ Riley, but for whatever reason, my mind went to CJ Clark when you said it. But then, so I, I'll ask the CJ Clark question because you mentioned him later. Um, how's he kind of, Aline was such a big, important part to, to your defense, and, and CJ's played that spot before. How's he kind of embraced those extra reps and possibly being the guy to replace Aline with that nose tackle spot uh, this spring? Yeah, well, he got his first start in the bowl game, and I think, you know, he plays really hard. That's one thing about C.J. you love, and it's been more about getting him big enough. Um, you know, he was probably in the 280s, and now he's up to close to 300. Uh, and so to be able to play with the motor that he had last year, but with the size that we need for him to be an imposing guy in there, uh, he definitely brings a different type of nose guard than Aleem. Aleem was, you know, 330-some pounds, and and so you're playing with a quicker guy. I think we have a good rotation in there right now with him and Davin and Josh Harris, where different types of people are playing that spot, and that creates different problems uh, for the center and guards and their combo on those two guys. So, you know, I think it's just about playing really hard and, and uh, 
taking advantage of opportunities. He is a disruptive player, which I like, you know, a little bit different, whereas Leem was occupying two blocks a lot. You know, I think CJ is a guy that can really penetrate and get some things going that way for us. <clears throat> you mentioned Savion's up to 300 pounds. Is he still playing on the outside? Or is he kind of switched from inside to outside? At that no, way? he's playing our, our defensive end position. He's, uh, and he's moving well, you know, it's, I think he's a guy that really thought he's a pleaser. He's a kid that doesn't want to make mistakes. And, and sometimes when you're in that mindset, Contavious Street used to be like that. You don't play as fast because you're afraid that you're going to make mistakes. And when you play like that, you actually play slower. And, and so he's cut it loose. He's, he's kind of let that fear of failure go. And he's making a lot more plays. He's a lot more disruptive. And he's been fun to watch this spring. Uh, David Thompson, what you got? Hey, Coach. I wanted to ask you a little bit about the the freshman class and and just the acclimation process, and if you feel like it's any different with, you know, I know things are starting to get a little bit better with COVID, but they're still, you know, doing all on online classes. They're not able to kind of bond the way that maybe you know past generations have. How do you feel like that's affected them, and and how do you think maybe um, it's uh, kind of changed things for y'all? Yeah. Well, it's a tough time for all these kids in that age group, you know, whether you're a football player or not, I feel for them. I mean, I have a son that's a freshman in college and, you know, watching what those kids lost their senior year of high school with their prom, with their graduation, all that, you know, I think, and now they're in school online, not getting the social interaction that a normal freshman would get. It's not good. Um, does it hurt the bonding of our football team? No, it doesn't. These guys are together a lot still. Our, our football team bonding is fine but societal and, and just cultural interaction and things that you'd love to see these guys being a part of on campus, it's a lot different. And, and so you do worry about that. Uh, I, I've never liked the online learning academic part of this for anybody, regardless of their age group. I think in general, our country's losing out right now uh, when it comes to learning and growing and the building blocks of the prerequisite courses that everybody needs in life. and. <laughs> excuse me nobody's getting that so yeah I am concerned about that one other quick question about the freshman um just kind of your thoughts on Jordan Poole um uh, you know nine practices in <clears throat> sorry guys I got bad allergies <clears throat> good coach Jordan Poole has done a good job he's swimming a little bit mentally but he can run really fast physical everything we'd hoped he'd be athletically He's a fun kid to coach, doesn't make a lot of the same mistakes twice. He's just trying to learn, you know, and transition from playing high school football to college football a semester early, and, and it's a lot. But he's getting a lot of reps. Peyton and Drake being out, he and Caden Fordham have gotten all those reps, and, and so it's been really good for him. You know, I think in his situation, being here early has been a great decision just because of the amount of work he's getting on the field right now. Thanks, Coach. Uh, Gibby. Yep, Dave, getting up, um, Devin is now getting a full spring with, with Coach Beck. Uh, yeah. How important has that been for him, and have you seen him progress nicely uh, because of that? Yeah, I think it's, you know, you're starting to see Devin finish Coach's sentences, you know, and, and he knows the offense now. And so now it's just putting it into play. I think sometimes all quarterbacks try to make too many plays and, and not just distribute the ball. At the end of the day, that guy's job is like a point guard. It's to distribute the ball, to pass the football to the right people, to hand it to the right people and not try to do too much. <clears throat> you know, let your arm talent do the rest. And so I think his biggest thing is sometimes those guys just want to make some elite plays that aren't there and get them in trouble. You know, instead of just taking what the defense gives you and letting those guys now go be athletes and make you look good. And so uh, the part of your question about him and Coach Beck being together, it's been great. I mean, I, it's impressive to see what Coach Beck did with two quarterbacks last year that he didn't get a coach in spring ball, you know. Um, both of those guys, I thought, performed at a high level under his leadership. And so you're getting to see that with Ben Finley now too, you know, Ben's in year two with coach and you're getting to see that growth with him. And Aaron's the one that you can see is, <laughs> you know, really struggling at times mentally. 
And Dave, also Devin being back from injury too. I mean, do you, do you think he maybe not say respects the game more, but just wants it a little bit more because it was taken away from from it for a while? Yeah, you know, I think losing the game to injury is a it's a humbling thing. It's a, a reflective part of the game that you wish every player could have without being injured. You know, I, I think it really does give you some perspective to how much you love the game and how much you regret maybe taking some things lightly prior to you wish you could practice you're dying to practice but you can't when you're hurt and then when you're healthy before an injury sometimes like oh man I got to practice you know and I think it just really puts things in perspective on how much you love being out there and Devin's definitely learned from that experience that way. Coach I feel you on the in you know, the allergies man I got oh, it's it. killing me today. Yeah. <laughs> Jonas what you got? I kind of just want to follow up on, on the quarterback talk. You touched on uh, Ben and Aaron earlier. Uh, last year with Devin and Baylor, you had two guys who had seen, you know, plenty of game reps. Uh, ben got the, the couple drives against Carolina last year. But other than that, you know, him and Aaron are both don't have a lot of snaps. So how important is it for those guys to get those reps, those extra reps to spring and kind of put them in as many game-like situations as possible heading into the fall? Yeah, I mean, every – move the ball type segment we can do with those quarterbacks, whether it's out in the field, red zone, two minute, backed up, you name it, um, where it's true, just move the football drives. Those are critical for these guys right now. And we need to get as many of them as we can um, and continue that when we get into fall camp because <clears throat> that's the most important thing. You know, and we can do skelly, we can do one-on-ones, all that kind of stuff, but that's not real football. It's not 300 pound linemen chasing you, trying to put you in the ground. You know, it's real football is different. And so the more we can do those type of exercises for them, the better and the more they'll get confident and their pocket presence will improve and all that stuff pays off. Matt Carter. Morning coach, how are you? Matt. Um, I want to ask you about a couple of positions. Uh, tight end, you don't have a lot of experience, especially from a depth standpoint. Has anybody kind of stepped up and emerged? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, start, yeah, tight end, uh, Dylan Parham has had a really good spring. He's catching the ball well. He's always been a really physical blocker for us. <clears throat> I thought last year he was one of our most physical blockers. And uh, so it's great having him in there. I think Andrew Jane is a guy. Um, Andrew played professional baseball, walked on here last year. Uh, so his college is getting paid for by um, pro baseball, but it's a great athlete. And so he's learning how to play still, but he's doing some really good things. You know, Cam Walker is a guy we're excited about. He's been hurt for part of the spring, but he's worked really hard. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think Uda you know, is coming along, has a great skill set. Cam Woods, same thing. Tough, hardworking guy, can do everything. I think D, uh, Parham is by far the lead guy in that room. I do think Trent Penix is someone that can do a lot of the things that you saw back when Jalen Samuels was here and Dylan Ottenreath, and Cole Cook and their backfield placement where they can be lead blockers, but also used in the pass game out of the backfield. I think Trent is going to, you're going to see his position kind of change um, where he can play running back, but also play that H hybrid type position for us to give us some flexibility with personnel. <clears throat> a quick follow up. How, are the, um, how about the offensive line and how have they been developing? Anybody kind of standing out so yeah. far? You know, the guys that played last year, uh, Dylan McMahon's really worked hard on his pass protection. I, you see him get a lot better. I think that was an area that he struggled in last year at times. You know, Grant Gibson's picked up where he left off. Icky's picked up where he's left off. It's good to have Tyrone back out there. I think Derek Eason's probably one of the most improved O-linemen. Uh, Derek's playing guard and tackle both. And, you know, Bryson Spees' back's played a lot of football. Uh, the freshman, Lyndon Cooper, has played a lot this spring. We're impressed with him. You know, uh, I think he's a guy that can do a lot for us at that position. He's very strong. Uh, Patrick Matan, uh, before Saturday's scrimmage, was doing a lot of good things. Uh, struggled Saturday at times. 
but he's come on compared to where he was a year ago. So <clears throat> like the competitive depth we have in there and, you know, obviously losing wit and skull trip. There's some guys that need to emerge. Um, we have a lot of guys that played last year on the O-line that are back and we still have a transfer that's joining us here when we get to the summer. So I like that group. You know, we just got to get the chemistry of that group where we want it now. <clears throat> Rob McClam. Yeah, Dave, how surreal is it that you're entering your ninth season at NC State? And how much growth do you think you've made since 2013? Yeah, well, I'm proud to be here still. I mean, I think <clears throat> being at a school as long as I have um, says a lot about NC State's commitment to me and, and also my commitment back. You know, this is where I want to be. I love it here. Um, it's a great place to live and, and to recruit. Our, our children love it here. Sarah and I have, you know, developed some great friends, love our church. And, uh, you know, there's still things to finish that we haven't finished. You know, we've done a lot of good things here. Um, really like the staff I have right now. It's fun coming to work with them every day. You know, this team's been through a lot. And I don't know if I can make it through year 10, a couple of years from now. You know, there's not many coaches that can say they've coached at one school for 10 years in a row. And that'd be quite an accomplishment. So just going to take it one day at a time. You know, how have I grown? I, you know, I think when you're a head coach, uh, I don't remember, I was 31 when I became a head coach. I had coached, you know, from 22 to 31 as an assistant. And you get really good at being an assistant, you know, in that period of time. All of a sudden you become a head coach. And even though you worked hard and you were really good at being an assistant, that doesn't mean you're a great head coach right away. It takes time. There's lessons that you don't get. Game day is way different as a head coach than it is in an, as an assistant. And so, you know, I've just got a better routine. I've learned through experience. I've been through a lot of tight ball games, one minute, you know, two minutes on the clock, possessions, and all those things add up over time. Um, you get better at managing your staff. You get better, you know, how to hire people when you lose staff. So there's a lot of things that I would say I'm better at now. And more than anything, I think just to being patient, like you, like fans, I want stuff to happen like that. And, and I don't have a lot of patience for poor performance. Uh, you know, I've learned how to help people probably more now than I did back then, but you know, it's been a great experience here and, and I look forward to the hopefully many years to come. Gibby. <clears throat> yeah, Dave, uh, Drake and Peyton being out of linebacker, is that more of a, a precautionary thing? And, and, and do you feel obviously that they've had enough game reps to, to, to being out this spring won't hurt them? Uh, no, it's not precautionary. I mean, it's part of their <clears throat> recovery from their surgeries they had. So they're both doing great, you know, but <clears throat> we're not going to put a guy out there before the trainers say he can, and they're just not there in that progression yet. But uh, they're both lifting, running, doing different change of direction things, but the contact piece on their timeline isn't fitting where we're at in spring ball. Going to take a couple more, Jonas. Yeah, Coach, I wanted to ask um, a pro day related question. I know you won't see Aleem and Joe and Kerry until tomorrow, but can you give us a good example of uh, a story or when a guy left and you hadn't seen him for months and then he came back and because he had been just dedicated to football for the last couple of months, he's just like an entirely different player right. doing his drills on the pro day? Yeah, I've seen Aleem and Joe already. I haven't seen Kerry, um, and they both look great. You know, I think. The biggest thing that happens to these guys <clears throat> when they get to these facilities where they're forced to eat a certain way for however many days they're there is they're able to change their body composition very quickly. You know, for us, we feed them, we have a training table, but, you know, we're not standing there over them. This is the only thing you get to eat and follow them around all day long. And, you know, I think that just the regiment of their nutrition piece and, they're, they don't have school, so it's just 24 seven get in shape, you know? And so you get to see them uh, transition from 3.30 to 3.15 or whatever it is, and they just look better, you know? And they're they're uh, dedicated to that task. And obviously as college coaches, we wish that we could get them to do that during their time here, 
but they have to go to school here, you know, I mean, they're up cramming for tests and writing papers and we all know how that is. Sometimes you're going to eat a pizza at midnight when you go through something like that. And it's hard to get them into that same exact type of nutritional habit, but you know, I hope the best for them. Obviously tomorrow's our pro day and, and we're excited for these guys and look forward to them going out and doing the best they can, you know, to take that next step. <clears throat> All right, Justin, you want to finish this up? Yeah, good morning, Coach. I wanted to ask you about the wide receivers room. It seems like you've got basically all of your production from last season coming back, but you've also got a lot of young talent at that position. Good problem to have, but how do you kind of juggle that from a rotational standpoint? And also, are there any young guys specifically that have really impressed you this spring so far? Well, it is nice to have Thayer and Emeka and Devin Carter and CJ Riley back. You know, I mean, that's that's big having those kind of players back. Um, but we want explosive plays. We want big plays in the past game and, and there's competition. You know, I know Porter Rooks uh, is competing hard to get more reps. Keon Lassane is competing hard to get more reps. Chris Scott, Jalen Coit. I mean, these are young players that are fast. And so how do they get the ball? They got to go out and outperform these guys. That's on them. It's not on us as coaches. They've got to earn it and they got to show it. And they got to be consistent. So, you know, I can't really point out a single guy. I want to see all of them make plays. I mean, whoever's in there, you know, Anthony Smith's a guy that we think has tremendous upside, hasn't shown it yet uh, as, as far as being consistent, catching the football. So running fast and getting open are great, but you got to finish with the ball and score and, and so we're just trying to get those guys up confidence wise. <clears throat> it was good to get in the scrimmage. Uh, Chris Scott and Jalen Coit um, and Keon all made some plays. So it was good to see. And we'll just keep progressing. You know, we want to have a good rotation at that position. And if you're playing fast on offense and you're able to, you know, get 70 to 80 plays, you're going to need a, a good rotation at that position in order to stay the way you want to health wise. Thank you. Yep. All right, coach. Thank you very much. And uh, right, we thank appreciate you guys. Everybody. Have a good day. See you. Thanks, everybody.